Welcome back Fireflies. I've got a project to share with you guys today and I'm hoping that you're going to be excited about this one. I certainly am. This is the project that we're going to end up making. It's a um, another window journal card but the difference is and this will be kind of like in two parts because we first have to make the glassine paper. And this is what I'm talking about. Um, this is made with our beeswax. Let me grab my beeswax here. These are little beeswax pellets that you can pick up from craft stores. Or if you want to go online, just put in natural beeswax. You want to make sure it's 100% natural because you are going to heat that and you don't want anything that's full of chemicals because the fumes, you know, we just don't need to be breathing all that. But what you're going to do is end up with this and it's glassine paper so that you can either cut it up like I've done here and I've layered that in between um, between the acetate or you can keep it as a, sh a sheet of paper and just trim this down and add that as a page within your journal. So the reason I like this and you might be thinking well why do I need to do that if it's going between acetate and this is the reason why. Now this is a, a book page that I've also done and because uh, I was just experimenting, and although you can see the print from the other side, I'm still going to be able to make use of this, but this is just an example to show you. Once that's in the journal, you're going to be able to see, because this has become transparent, you can see writing behind it, which I think is just a really uh, nice, versus, you know, just taking a digital and cutting it out you wouldn't have the transparency. Um, but yeah this is another idea. I think I'm going to make a journal card using that one and this is just one of the little butterflies I cut out here and I think that's going to be really pretty um, sandwiched between there for another one so that'll be another idea but today let's just get started. I want to show you the first step of this, which is going to be making the glassine paper. So, let me just show you guys all the ones I've made. Now, this is taking, what you're going to do is, is get your um, napkin that you want to do this, this process to, and just get that down to the first layer. Luckily, this one was only two layers, and this is the one I'm going to work with today because I love this. This was gifted to me. But, the sheet, and it has to be a single, make sure you separate. Now this has probably got two layers, but if you separate that down and end up with one, you can also just do um, some stamping on this. I didn't do it with this one because, as I said, I was just experimenting, but before you add the beeswax to it, you can do some stamping, and uh, that makes a really pretty image as well. So hang on to those if you think you would want to do that process. Because see, that's still got some of the um, pink from the roses. I think that would be really pretty to have some um, stamping done to. So I'll save that one. So this is the one we're going to do today. But I wanted to show you before we get started. Let me just go through all of the ones that I've made here. I've got the bees of course, and aren't those beautiful? And so those you could even uh, maybe take a circle punch. Let's see if that will work. Oh yeah, that's not going to work. I don't. Ah, it might because of that beeswax. It's not that sharp. Let me see if I can get that. Actually, that will work. So now I could just put that and glue it to a page, and it's kind of, you know, a little bit different to the decoupage, but I think that's going to be really pretty on a book page. So there's a lot of things you could do with that. 
Um, so this is the one I worked with today on this one. I love that napkin. That's beautiful. So I've got several I can make out of that. And look at this one. This is some blue. These were all gifted to me, by the way, these napkins. Um, I've got, I've been so, so fortunate. Isn't that going to be pretty there? Yeah, I've been really blessed with my um, friends from this community. have sent me a lot of napkins. And uh, I'm so grateful for it because I don't tend to get out. There's not many places in the UK to get out and shop at. And particularly, it's like a thousand times worse during COVID. So this has been great because I've, if just one day I just spent <clears throat> a half a day doing this. Um, it doesn't take long. The hardest part is separating the napkin. Oh, here's one that's already been done. Oh, wow. Okay, well, that's okay. We're still going to go ahead, but isn't that going to be pretty when um, we put that in between? That's just going to be absolutely gorgeous. And then here, isn't this a pretty one? I intended to make an autumn journal. When I saw this, I was like, oh, that would be beautiful for an autumn journal, but I just haven't gotten around this year, and of course it's too late, but I don't know. Maybe I'll still make one. Isn't that pretty? Hydrangeas in there. That's so pretty. <clears throat> and then this, this one, again, if you just visualize how that's going to look. Just beautiful. I love this one. This technique, I just think it's it's such a great way to use because you get tired of decoupage all the time, and this is just another way. And I do think you'll enjoy it. So, okay, well you've seen enough. Uh, you, I think you've got the idea there. So what you're going to need is your beeswax and an iron, an ironing board, and then. get some uh, baking paper because the baking paper is going to withstand the heat um, and let me I'm just going to get a fresh one actually because I've got a different iron and um, I had kept an iron separate as a crafting iron, but because we're trying to downsize, um, I just went ahead and got rid of that iron, so I'm down to just one. So I'm going to start with a fresh one. So I'm going to move the camera now into the other room where we can do this, and uh, and then we'll you'll see how quick and easy it is. So. Okay guys, I hope you can see that okay. Um, the way I've got the camera mounted, unfortunately I can't really get it any closer, but <clears throat> very similar to, you know, when I beeswax my journal covers, it's, it's the same process, but I thought I would show it again here on this because some people may not be familiar with it. So what you're going to do is just try to put few of these. Uh, whoops, I got a bit heavy here. And again, be careful because you don't, if this is your, you know, I, I've got one ironing board uh, now, so I've got to be really careful. And I would probably recommend maybe even put an old towel down just on the off chance that some of this uh, were to ooze out. You just want to make sure you're protecting that, you know, because this is where I iron my clothes. <laughs> and then get your um, iron probably between a low and a medium set, and you can you'll learn really quick if you need to increase the heat. Um, but I would start out low because once it starts melting, that it's going to move around pretty quick. Up. This is a new iron. Um, yeah. So 
I'm not too sure how long it takes to get mine hot. Yeah, I'm going to have to turn it up a bit. And yeah, just get you a one day, get everything prepped, and then put an old movie on, or some really nice music, and uh, and it will go so quick. Now see, you can see that, that uh, beeswax, it's getting close to the edge, so I am going to be really careful about this, and next time I'm definitely going to put a towel under mine, so... Learn from me, guys. Make sure you put one to protect that. And what you want to do, um, because this one I know I'm going to put in as a page, so you want to make sure you get all of it covered with the, um, the beeswax. And it smells really nice when it's melting as well. <laughs> so that's another added little bonus. So just carefully and try to get that moved around. Being careful, I don't want that going off the edge there. And you'll be able to tell when it's melted. Yep, see? Oh gosh. Boo boo there. Okay. Yeah. So when it's still warm, you'll see that it's it's still got a wet look to it. So at that point, I'll just sit it to the side and let this dry, and then you'll be able to peel that off. trying to stick. Oh, this is really weird. I've never had this happen before. So yeah, I better get that off before it dries. Typical when you go to video it. That's so strange that I've never ever had that. Maybe I've got the paper. Maybe I had the paper a different way last time. There we go. Alright, so yeah, I'm just going to set that over now and let that dry, and it, seriously, you, it will dry so quick. So that's all there is to it. I'm going to go now back in and show you how to make um, the journal card using this. Okay guys, uh, so now I'm back. Uh, let's take... This and sit it over here. Uh, you're going to need some cardstock. I wouldn't go with anything super thick, but you do want it. Let's see, mine's about a two, I think it's 200 GSM. And I measured mine at three, and well, first let's cut this to six, six inches. And then three and three quarter. Okay. And now get those lined up and take a square or an oval. I'm just trying to think if we should do a different shape. I don't know. I like the square, I think. I'll do a different one just so you can see. <clears throat> okay, and this is the oval um, 
it's going to look. I think that'll be pretty too, especially with that gingham. I don't know why I say that. Probably be pretty with any of them, but all right, just try to center that over the two pieces. That way you get it exactly. And then now we're just going to emboss that top one. So this is what I'm ended up with. I'm just going to emboss this top one because I wanted the back to be flat so that you could do some journaling back there. So this is just an old um, Stampin' Up! one. I wanted to start using some of my others. So I thought it was time to start getting into these ones that have been shoved in the back a bit. And the other thing I've done ahead of time was I went ahead and cut out a little label. You don't, you know, any kind of label. It's just nice to add. I think this space needed something, and then the metal brads just kind of brought it out. So that's the only other thing is you need to cut some kind of label. <coughs> Okay, let me get this out of the way and we'll get this put together. I'm sorry for the noise, guys. I've got, there's loads of guys out here with the jackhammer this week. Oh, it's just ridiculous. Oh. <laughs> I just ready to get out of society. <laughs> Okay, so that's going to be the back. I'll leave that. And again, this is just some vintage photo. to cut, this is the acetate, you're going to need to cut two of these pieces because you're going to sandwich that um, napkin, the glassine napkin, you're going to sandwich between these two. First thing we want to do, um, I tell you what, let me go ahead and get this label on first. And what I did here is just went ahead and, because if I don't, I'm likely to go ahead and get that put together before I put this one out with the brads. I, I want to get the brads in. I don't know what it is about work when they have to be so loud. Gosh. Okay, so this is just, um, again, this is that paper artsy, um, and I don't recall the name of the stamp set, but I love this. This little stamp is so pretty to me. Just go ahead and get this on, and then we will move on. I really 
should sort these out. This was um, one of my trips. I thought, oh, I'll take a few things with me, and I dumped all sorts of things in there. And uh, to be honest, these little hitch, I totally forgot I even have those. Gosh, <laughs> it's just ridiculous. Maybe one day I'll, I'll get organized. I think we all must hope and think that. These are some tiny brads I got from Stampin' Up, gosh, probably 10 years ago. And they are so tiny. Really struggling to... Ugh. Let me take my glasses off. Can't see if until I get my glasses off. Okay, that's better. Now let's get our acetate glued down. where I'm going to want them to be. Oh, that would be pretty there. Yep. Okay, now I'm just going to get a little bit more glue to hold that. Oh, I love that napkin. That is just beautiful. And then we're going to sandwich the other piece of acetate between that. And now just add the back piece. And what I usually do is just go along the, the outer edge and then here because I always take mine through the machine anyways. Sewing machine, when I say machine. <laughs> um, So you won't need a lot of glue, is what I'm trying to say. Okay, I'm going to stop the camera here, guys. Oh, look at that. And I'm going to let this dry and run it through the machine, the glue dry. And then I'll run it through the sewing machine and uh, we'll finish it off. Okay guys, that's what it looks like now with some stitching around it. I just think this is so pretty. And then again, isn't that going to be pretty like next to a, a book page in your journal and you'd have that showing through. Oh, I love it. So, <clears throat> you could add a pocket back here, but I kind of like the idea of that just being a little private note space. but. Let's go ahead and get a brad up here with a little bit of
kind of brad an eyelet. I'm sorry, my brain. Oh, it's on vacation still. Okay, let me grab a little piece of. Okay, there we go guys. That's two cards ready uh, for some upcoming journals. So I hope you have enjoyed this video. And uh, I would love to see whatever you guys get up to. I just love those. I love the way that that has come out. I hope you've enjoyed it as well guys. Take care of yourselves and I'll be back soon with some more projects. Bye.